Welcome to Nebraska, Coach. Thank you so much. We're happy to be here. What do you think? They said that we were going to just uh, drive over and pull up and walk in. I had no idea that this is what to expect, but I should have known. Uh, I should have known what, what I would see, and uh, this is why we're here. We're here because of you guys. We're here because of uh, a tremendous tradition, but also a great, great future. And uh, I can promise you this: I'll start as soon as this is done. I'll start tonight. We might have started last night trying to build the best football team, the team that you guys deserve, and. Uh, uh, a, a team that every time that you come watch us play, you're going to love the way that we play. So thank you for being here, man. Go Big Red. Banner Day here at the Hawks Championship Center in Lincoln. Matt Rule, the 31st head coach named at the University of Nebraska's football program. 76 days, a long 76 <laughs> days, Sean, but it's now over with. They, Trav Albert's got his guy. What is your big impression leaving this day? Well, number one, he really carried the room. Um, you know, we've been through, unfortunately, a lot of these football press conferences at Nebraska with head coaches, and they've all been a little bit different over the years. Uh, but just his approach, I mean, having his family and bringing him out front and center and talking about his wife and, and, and just all the little things that he did, uh, but just the way his message, his stories, he was prepared. Um, he, he is, is probably as well of a public speaker as I, I can remember at Nebraska. Yeah, and he mentioned his wife, Julie, being pivotal in this process. His, his son, who is his oldest of his three children, going to be a senior next fall basically saying, Dad, you know, you don't have to coach, but we want you to coach. This is what you do. And Matt Rule said himself, he could be out playing golf, but he's going to get paid the same amount. And yet he's taken on this challenge in a program he's always respected and revered. Yeah, I think when you look at jobs like this, they don't come op open very often. And, you know, Penn State's, the Michigan's, the Notre Dame's, the Ohio State's, the Nebraska's, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, these types of jobs in the Big Ten, which as Trev Alberts referred to, is part of the power two, and that's where we're heading. If he wants to get one of those kinds of jobs that fits him, you know, you don't have a you don't have the opportunity to be picky. And I think he knew that. He's like, look, I don't know what's going to open next year. It sounds like he maybe could have had the Auburn job if he wanted it. And I think he knew that wasn't a fit for him. And he's like, look, we're not going to find a better fit for us than this. And I think the biggest thing is Nebraska was willing to meet the demands. And there aren't a lot of teams that would have, you know, I think when you looked at his buyout, you're like, we're going to get him at maybe as a discounted coach because of the Carolina Panthers. There were no Cyber Monday sales or Black Friday specials on Matt Rule. It was, it was full retail sticker price to get him to Nebraska. But you know what? These great fans, they're not getting a discount. I mean, right. there's 102 skyboxes at Memorial Stadium. It leads the Big Ten Conference. Those fans pay upwards of 150000 per year for those boxes. They're not asking to cut corners to win. And I think Trev Alberts, Ted Carter, they're on the same page. And knowing that there's a big stadium renovation project that is just around the corner, they need to get this program commit. back and commit to this program because Trev Alberts said this is a pivotal critical juncture for the Nebraska football program and really what was revealed eight years 74 million dollars and at one point it was off this deal was done it wasn't going to happen and yet Trev Alberts saw it through it reminds you of the stories of Trev Alberts with Dean Blaze mm -hmm. when, when he hired Dean Blaze as the original UNO hockey coach to replace the great Mike Kemp Dean Blaze was a national championship coach turned down Trev multiple times the third time around I believe is when Trev got Dean Blaze so he's in his short history of hiring big time coaches, he's had this happen before. And um, as you heard Matt Rule, he's very creative to find ways out of the word no. And I think Matt Rule, it's set from the sounds of it, said no a couple of times. And on the field, I was impressed too, uh, not only with what Trev was telling us about Matt Rule, but what Matt Rule said is basically, 
you know, his teams at Temple were not like his teams at Baylor. Like, he goes in and kind of adjusts and adapts. So it's, he doesn't have a template that says this is the way we're going to do it. He's going to use what's around him and, and basically says the one thing he won't budge on is winning the line of scrimmage. No doubt. I do I do notice, though, the metrics of his recruiting already. Uh, just some of the early follows and social media offers and interactions that we've seen in this the first two days. Speed is a priority, and locally, Jalen Lloyd, Omaha West Side, that offer jumped out right away. Uh, just they saw his speed, what kind of athlete he was. He was a priority. Malachi Coleman was one of the early follows by the staff uh, because of his speed, and he, obviously, he's a Mickey guy, a really important recruit to keep. But um, I think the metrics of speed. You can't, you can't coach that up. And I, you right. can tell that's going to be a priority in their recruiting as well. And Matt Rule, very respectful of Mickey Joseph, respectful. Even Scott Frost mentioning both of those guys and how uh, key he, they were to where he's at today, right? Yeah, a lot different from previous coaching changes we've seen at Nebraska where it's kind of, you know, they kind of turn into sessions of throw shade at the other guy mm -hmm. before you. And you get the sense that Matt Rule's not going to do that. He knows Scott Frost. In fact, he talked to Scott Frost. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure um, Scott Frost gave him some very healthy feedback on just some certain things to watch out for and do and, and, and what he did wrong and what maybe he'd do differently. So that was interesting just to hear that part of it because I don't think we've ever really dealt with that dynamic. I'm trying to remember other – coaches over the years even but well even Matt Rule said that he reached out to Tom Osborne and, and, and coach Osborne said hey, hey you don't need my blessing but Matt Rule thought that he should at least reach out to be respectful and, and basically knock off a bucket list item because he revered the head coach for so long and coach Osborne not here today mm -hmm. uh, but did say he, I believe in the World Herald that he had had another engagement uh, Governor Jim Pillen was here at the mm -hmm. press conference who you know is a outgoing member of the Board of Regents so uh, you had a lot of political brass present, uh, well-staged event. Yeah. I mean, what did you think yeah, of this? I think it was an interesting first time ever in the Hawk Center. A lot they of really room. did it right, a lot of room. And I, I, I thought that this couldn't have gone any better for Nebraska. If you're if you're Trev Alberts and staff, you got to be pretty pleased. Now what's ahead for this uh, bat rule and moving forward? Recruiting and roster. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it starts in, in finishing the staff. So these next few days, roster meetings with players to find out who's going to go in the transfer portal. That's That's a big priority. And the second priority is getting your staff done because you need to have 10 assistant coaches that are available to recruit and go out on the road starting Friday. And then starting Friday, you can have official visitors come to campus. So th those are all key timeline dates for that December 21st yeah. signing day, okay. uh, which is right around the corner for Nebraska. Uh, they've got currently 15 commits. Mm -hmm. How many of those 15 commits are going to stay on board? That's a big question, I'm sure. Um, questions about other coaches being retained. Uh, that's another part of this puzzle right now. Yeah, Matt Rule saying he's reached out to all the recruits already just to touch base. We shall see how this progresses. But a new era in Nebraska football is Matt Rule, the new leader of the Cornhuskers.